The blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, we release it on tonight. And we say, hallelujah, that you destroy and you dismantle everything that is not like God. Let the blood shut the mouth of the lions tonight uh, against every healing, uh, against every powers that subject themselves, uh, against every power that exalts itself against the name of Jesus. Uh, tonight we say let the blood of Jesus bring down to subjection. Uh, we say tonight let the blood of Jesus let it speak. Uh, let it shine. Let the pray high out in this place. Uh, let us speak. Let us speak. Uh, let the blood speak over our lives. Uh. Let the blood speak over your health. Uh. Let the blood speak over your finances. Uh. Let the blood speak over your favor. Let the blood speak over your businesses. Uh. Let the blood speak over your children. Uh. Let the blood speak over your health. Uh. Let the blood speak over your family. Let the blood speak over the impossibles. Uh. Yes, Father, let the blood let us speak. Uh. Let the blood speak. Uh. Let the blood speak. Let the blood, oh, the blood of Jesus. Let it speak on tonight. Let it give us power on tonight. Let it give our leaders on tonight, Father. Let it give our leaders on tonight, God. Let the blood release that which, Father, you have for your people on tonight. So, Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for pouring your grace upon us. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving us your grace freely. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for giving us your grace. For giving us your grace. Grace has gone before us today. Grace has made it to us standing. Grace has made it that we are still standing. Those things that should have took us out. Those things that should have disappointed us. Those things that should have destroyed us. Those things that should have killed us. Uh, we know what those things are. Those things like sicknesses uh, that should have took us out. Uh, that accident, Lebrasha, that should have took us out. Eh? That's that, that drug and alcohol that should have took us out. Uh, that suicidal that should have taken us out. Uh, that suicidal that should have taken us out. Uh, that should have taken our family. That fire, that accidental fire. That accidental fire, that accidental fire, that accident that was meant for us, uh, the blood of Jesus prevented it. Uh, the grace of God surrounded us. Uh, the grace of God surrounded us. Uh, and the blood of Jesus uh, counted all joy unto us. Uh, it counted us in the numbers. The blood of Jesus has counted us. Uh, counted those things, God, in the number. And then I counted them, oh God, Reba Shata. Oh, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood. Thank you, Father. We thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. Father, we say that on tonight, uh, everything that has the name of your people, your children on tonight, God. Father, we lift our hands uh, and we say, Father, we receive it. Uh, help us, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your grace for bringing us here on tonight. Hallelujah. For some of us had a really hard week. Yes, Father, some of us had a very challenging week. Yes, Father, some of us had a very stressful week, God. Hallelujah. But thank God, hallelujah, for grace. What a man of God is this. And he can allow us to go through so much. But yet still, we are not abandoned. But yet still, we are not forsaken. But yet still, we are still standing. But yet still, we still have hope. But yet still, we have hope. Somebody say, we have hope. We have hope in Jesus. For some people, hopes in material things. Some people homes in their cars. Uh, some people homes in their finances. Uh, some people home in things uh, that doesn't bring answers. But yet tonight, Father, we say our hope is built on nothing else. Somebody say uh, that our hope is built on nothing else. Uh, our hope is built on nothing else but the name of Jesus. Uh, our hope is built on nothing else. Uh, it's built on nothing else, hallelujah, but upon Jesus. So tonight we thank you for our hope. We thank you, Father, that we can come to a God that we can hope in. We can thank you, God, that we can come to a Father. We can come to a God, hallelujah, that does not reject us. No matter what we look like, no matter what we sound like, he does not reject us. He does not reject us. He loves us just the same. 
Somebody say he loves us just the same. He loves us just the same. He loves you and I. He loves you and I just the same. Black, white, yellow, green, brown. He loves us just the same. Because this is the attribute of who God is. This is the attribute tonight of who God is. So tonight we come to the God of red, yellow, green, blue, black. Yes, Lord, our God is international. Somebody say our God is international. Our God is international. Our God is international. So tonight we come to the God of international. We come to the God of the international. We come to the God, hallelujah, of the international. So today we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for encouraging the hearts of each and every one here on tonight. Hallelujah. I say that tonight we shake ourselves. Because there is a meal, hallelujah, a supernatural meal, hallelujah, that has been brought here tonight. There is a supernatural, somebody said supernatural, 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 that is getting ready to be poured out. So, Father, tonight we thank you for the leaders, hallelujah, we thank you for the supporters, we thank you for those that have traveled far and wide for this weekend, for this occasion, that are coming tonight to grace this ministry. That are coming tonight to pour out in this ministry. They could have been doing something else. They could have been, been somewhere else. But Father, they find their feet to come and to celebrate. Father, you said, oh God, when we celebrate with one another. When we celebrate with one. Father, so you will allow us to also celebrate. So Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you for their sacrifice uh, as they begin to come. Uh, hallelujah, Jesus, Father, we ask, uh, Holy Ghost, that you remove every hindrance. Uh, somebody say, remove every hindrance, remove every hindrance. Every hindrance, remove out of the way. Uh, anything that will cause any blockage, that will cause any delay tonight. Somebody say, we remove it. We remove it, we remove it on tonight. Uh, hallelujah, we remove it on tonight. Remove it on tonight, God, Hallelujah. We ask, oh God, and on tonight, hallelujah, let's give the Lord a clap offering, hallelujah. We don't want to be silent on tonight. We are here, we didn't come here for nothing, but we came here tonight to receive. We have come here tonight to receive. We have come here tonight to carry something home. We have come here tonight because we believe and we trust. Uh, because we believe and we trust. Uh, for that you ought to clap your hands. Uh, because you believe and you trust. Uh, you believe not in man but in your God. Uh, a God that is more than able no matter where you are. No matter what place that you are. The God that is more than able tonight. We have come unto that God on tonight. Uh, hallelujah Father we thank you. We thank you. We thank you Jesus. So Father tonight we come humbly. Hallelujah. We say come humbly. Somebody say we come humbly. We come humbly. We come humbly. We come humbly that tonight uh, you do something special. Somebody say do something special. Do something special with the clap hands of your hands. Uh, with the clapping of your hands say do something special. Do something awesome tonight. Do something new. Through our leaders, our men speakers, hallelujah, throughout this weekend, Father, we say that you pour out, Lord, hallelujah, pour out, hallelujah, pour out, pour out yourself, we need more rain, hallelujah, tonight, more rain, somebody, if you need more rain, shout more rain, we need more rain, more rain on this weekend, hallelujah, more rain, more rain, more rain, more rain, Hallelujah, more rain, more rain, more rain. More rain, more rain, more rain. More rain, more rain, more rain tonight. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. Fresh oil, even though we don't have the music on tonight. But we are the music of worship. We are the music of praise. We are the music of praise. We are the music of praise, so tonight we come, hallelujah. Somebody said tonight we come to dedicate. We come to dedicate on tonight. We come to dedicate in the name of Jesus. We come to dedicate in the name of Jesus. We come to dedicate the foundation to the God of all gods. We come to dedicate the foundation, hallelujah, to the God of all gods. We come tonight to uproot. Hallelujah, up on this ground uh, that Citadel has stepped upon, uh, we come to uproot uh, every God, hallelujah, that has.
has been committed to the foundation. That has been committed and dedicated to the foundation. Hallelujah. They have been committed to the foundation of this ground. So tonight, as the feet of the soul, as the souls of Sandel has stepped upon it, somebody said tonight, we are prudent, we are prudent. Somebody said we are prudent, we are prudent. With the clapping of your hands, we are prudent. With the clapping of your hands, we are prudent. So let's begin to uproot. Let's begin to uproot. Let's begin to cast out uh, and move around and say we approve it. We approve it. We approve it. Because Saturday has stepped upon the ground uh, of this place. So tonight, uh, we approve everything that has been buried. Uh, we approve everything that has been buried. Uh, we approve everything that has been committed. We approve every God that has sat on this territory. We approve every God that had entered this territory. And we say we approve it. We approve it. We approve it. Uh, Approve it, approve it. Somebody said we're gonna destroy it tonight. We destroy it tonight. Hallelujah! With the clapping of your hands, let's clap your hands because as we clap the hands, things are breaking. Things are being destroyed as we lift our voices. Things are being destroyed. Hallelujah, Jesus! We come here tonight to uproot, to destroy, and to plant on tonight. So tonight, this altar. Hallelujah, we commit this altar unto the God of all God. We commit this altar unto the God of Abraham. Somebody say the God of Abraham. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Isaac. The God of Isaac. We commit our altars. Other men commit their altars to animals. They commit their altars to demons. They commit their altars, hallelujah, to God that doesn't answer. To God that doesn't do anything. But tonight we come to commit this altar, this altar. Somebody say, this altar, this altar. This altar, this altar. This foundation, this foundation. This foundation, this foundation. Upon the rock. Somebody say, upon the rock. Upon the rock. Upon the rock, R-O-C-K, the revelation of Christ's kingdom. Somebody say the revelation of Christ's kingdom. The revelation of Christ's kingdom. We have come tonight, hallelujah, to dedicate and to commit on tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout we dedicate. We dedicate all over this place. We dedicate Hamashana. We dedicate with the lifting up of our voices. With every hand clapping. With our fruit, hallelujah, tonight. We dedicate, we dedicate. We dedicate, we dedicate. We come in, we come in.
Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty, 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 mighty good God. He's altogether lovely. Hallelujah. Excellent is his name. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a faithful God. He's a peaceful God. Hallelujah. I thank him for keeping us on tonight. I thank him for traveling mercies on tonight. I thank him for his grace and his mercies. He's faithful and he's kind. He's just. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Nobody like him. Hallelujah. Nobody like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he's done anything great for you, I just need you to clap your hands. Come on, clap those hands like they're thunder. Hallelujah. If he's done anything great for you, clap your hands like it's thunder. Hallelujah. Clap those hands like they're thunder. Clap, 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 clap. people and shout and shout and shout and shout and shout hallelujah. and shout with a voice of triumph hallelujah 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 see what the Lord has done oh y'all don't seem to be excited see what the Lord has done see what the Lord has done a promise is a promise a promise is a promise. The Lord did this. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. See. Whew. See what he has done. He's awesome. Only God could do this. Only God could do this. Hallelujah. You may, you may have your seats. I'm going to do the announcements real quickly. Amen. For those who are watching this live stream, we are Citadel Cathedral of Prayer International. Amen. 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 You still have time to get here. We're here to dedicate our new edifice. Our new edifice. As I said, see what God has done. He's done a mighty good thing. Hallelujah. He's a promise keeper. Every word that he spoke concerning Citadel has come to pass. Amen. Amen. We are located at 110 West Hampton Avenue in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Our services are on Tuesday evenings. Life's class are 730 on Tuesday evenings. Amen. Amen. And we want to acknowledge our set gifts. Our chief apostle, Thomas W. Ridgely. Come on, you can stand and clap and honor God for him. Amen. And our bishop designate, Jeff Brooks. Where is she? I thought I saw Pastor Cervantes, our assistant Pastor Cervantes. Shelton, there she is. Amen. Our set gifts of this house. Amen. We thank God for all of our pastors and everyone that's here. We thank God for our Uncle Dark being here. Become is in the house. Becomes in the house. Hallelujah. Thank God for traveling mercy. Thank God for traveling mercy. It's good to see you, Become. We're family. We are a family. Amen. Okay. Let me get these announcements out of the way. Amen. The restrooms in the back, the only ones that are open are the women's. Amen. So if men, if you need to use the restroom, please go down this hall. The one in the back is out of order. Amen. Amen. And we ask that you please refrain from walking once the preaching has begun. Amen. Please no eating, chewing gum, or drinking in the sanctuary. Amen. You can go into the vestibule. Amen. We will have a game night or game day tomorrow afternoon at 4 p.m. So we're asking everyone to come out. We're going to have play some games. We're going to have some spades. We're going to have family feud. We're going to have some, I don't know, just come out and have some fun on tomorrow afternoon. Amen. And then Sunday we'll have 
uh, Pastor Dwight Whitehead at 11.30. Amen. And our Pastor, jo Pastor Jonathan Marshall from Atlanta on Sunday afternoon at 5 p.m. So if you can come out, we ask that you please come out on Sunday as well to celebrate as we dedicate this new edifice unto the Lord. Monday is Zumba. Zumba resumes Citadel. Zumba resumes on Monday at 7.30 p.m. And the class is $5. Friday, March 11th at 10 p.m. is our first women worship in winter. All I ask to please wear white during this worship and soaking shut in. Please spread the word and note this is open to the public. A flyer with additional information is forthcoming. Amen. Please come out. Women, it is open to the public. So invite your friends. Men, if you want to come, you can come too. And just soak in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Friday, March 18th through Saturday, March 19th is Leadership Marching Orders Conference in Philadelphia, PA. All leaders are expected to attend and register. The flyer is circulating and can be reviewed on our Facebook Copi page. Sunday, March the 20th at 10 a.m. is new members class. This will take place every third Sunday. Friday, April the 22nd at 7.30 p.m. We will host our very own Christian comedy show. Amen. We have a spectacular lineup. All adult, all adult tickets are $20. Youth 12 to 18 are 10, and children under 12 are $5. If you have any questions, please see Prophetess Elizabeth. And then finally on Friday, May the 20th through Saturday, May 21st, is Let the Prophets Dance Workshop for dancers, psalmists, and minstrels. The flyer is in circulation on our Facebook page. Registration is $75. If you, see, if you have any questions, please see Elder Will Dean Burgess. Amen. Those are your announcements. Everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So can we stand Hallelujah. up and just give God a miraculous hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. For truly he has been good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has kept me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. So we bless Hallelujah. Him. And I want you to just stand right where you are and lift your hands and just begin to call on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Call him at the name that you know him to be. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, take about two seconds to fill this room. Hallelujah. And call upon the Lord. Hallelujah. On tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes. 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 Yes.
time. Hallelujah. This song says more than anything.
more than anything. Amen. If you love him, I like you love him. Put your hands together and bless him if you love him in this place. The songs say love him more than anything. Amen. Hallelujah. There is only one name. He's our champion. Amen.
Hallelujah. For his loving kindness toward us. But I came on this Friday night to have some church. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, well, thanks be to God who has given me the victory. Oh, I hear me. Come look at somebody and say, but thanks be unto God who has given me the victory. Despite of what I'm feeling, I have the victory. Despite of what it looks like, I have the victory. Many have walked out, but look at your neighbor and say, I've got the victory. If you got the victory, I just need to hear a victorious sound in the house. like I got the victory lazy. But look at your name and say, I was promised victory. And because I was promised victory, Kay, a promise will remain a promise. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, what it feels like. No, come on here, somebody. Neither what is going on right now. Somebody shout, I got victory in this. All right, we're going to move now. I've come to declare to somebody that you got victory even in this. Praise him, Kay. Hallelujah. I said we're going to dance on the floor. I said I'm here to
ain't gonna apologize to the dance all weekend. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say when family comes.
we gonna try to move.
encourage others that I can encourage others. We honor Prophetess Elizabeth today.
myself. Say, hey, you, I'm so proud of you because when life got tough, you did not quit. Now, real quick, if you, somebody just prophesied that over your life, can you release a sound of victory in the room? Because we are a room of survivors that when I had the opportunity to quit, I didn't walk away. When I wanted to walk away, I did not give up. When they told me I should have, I said no. Let's work. Let's work. Let's work. Where, where is Bumblebee? She's asleep. Okay. Because I ain't seen her move yet. And I got nervous. All right. Um, the book of Deuteronomy, y'all. Can y'all can we, would y'all work with me tonight? My district missionary is not here. So she normally has a job. And her job is that if I'm preaching good and y'all sit on me. Thank you. Somebody say preach, all right? Um, so, you know, I, you know, we have to bring our amen corner sometimes because the folk will sit there to see, let's see what they got tonight. So I don't, don't sit on me. Go with me, go with me, go with me. Um, as the Lord began to deal with me for the occasion, y'all can sit down, be careful. Y'all can sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, and he gave me, he gave me something to deal with. And I had to go, I had started writing it out and started looking into it. 
And um, as I started looking into it, the text that I wanted to use, I realized I preached it last year when I was here around the same time. So I said, well, no, can't do that. I did. I said, mm -mm, can't do that, Lord. And I said, they're not going to say, oh, he, he, not, didn't he preach it last year? And I said, yeah, can't do that. And so um, even though I believe the word of the Lord is living and that we can preach the same text every day and probably get a different, a different view of it, right? Um, but because I understand the type of how church folk are. Um, so, you know, I come out to put my best foot forward. And so I said, well, Lord, I heard what you said, so give me scriptures. And he began to download scriptures um, to me. And I thank God for having brothers that you can talk to about the Bible. So even when you are trying to figure it out, you can say, hey, how does this sound? Amen. So I thank God for my covenant brotherhood. And I mean that with my whole heart that I can sit down with and we can bat ideas around. And I don't have to worry about them calling me stupid, dumb, or say he don't know what he's doing. Uh, so if you don't have brothers like I got some, go get you some. Because I thank God for them. Amen. And so um, so here we are um, in the book of Deuteronomy. Um, I, 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 and there were so many scriptures. I am a nerd at heart. And so I like a lot of scriptures. And so my church gets mad at me because there are times where I will give them like 12 billion scriptures. And like, no, nah, we're going to read all of them. Right. And so they like, Pastor, we've been here four hours. Let us go home. I'm like, no, nah, because if y'all was in the club, you wouldn't be trying to go home. You'll be posted on the wall looking for your next date. So, so y'all going to give me my time as we read. All, I've been to the club. I know what y'all do. I picked some of y'all up back in the day. And so, you know, and so you're going to give me my time um, as we begin to deal with these scriptures tonight. Amen. The book of Deuteronomy. Um, um, Elder Ben, you, are you going to read like you know how today? Good. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 24. If you will give me a preaching license tonight to go ahead and knit these scriptures together. And it reads the following. Every place. Nope, nope. I don't like it. Try it again. No, remember, remember, no, no, remember we did, didn't we talk about reflection? No, mm -mm. no, no, we didn't. Nope. Look at every reflection. Okay, that's okay. I think I like that one. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Elder B. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Every place where the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Even from the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, that is, even into the uttermost sea shall the coast be. Um, the second, the book of Second Peter says, For the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but he is long suffering toward us, not willing that any of us shall perish, but that we shall come unto repentance. I want to deal with the first half of that. And it just says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Can I go to another scripture? Psalms 127 says, Except the Lord build the house. Them that labor, they labor in vain. Okay, you know, I cannot, y'all, we go, I'm going to work tonight for a little bit. I'm going to work. You may be seated. I want to deal with the subject title tonight, this place. Somebody say this place. Oh, okay, y'all, see, y'all ain't even, even, even caught it yet. That was prophetic. Every place that the foot of the sole of your foot shall try will be, your, somebody say this. All right, right there. I thought I had a believer right there because the truth is that means no matter where I walk in my life, the Lord already promised that it belongs to me. Now, some of you have been in the wrong places, but God said, even when your foot got there, I gave the wrong place to you to make you victorious over that place. Somebody say this place. Um, I don't know if you've ever been there, but you felt like that you were not in the right place and you thought you were losing your mind. But somebody say this place, Some, this place. Listen, 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 this place. You know, we are so used to dealing with the Lord says the Lord has people. He deals with people. The same way that God uses people, he uses locations. That God is a God of places and people. OK, um, if you don't believe me. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Darthanian, Uradine, Babatunde, Hogan, Nichols. That's my name. He, that's my real name. My real name, right? And I'm from Detroit, Michigan. According to other folk who aren't from Michigan, they will say that's Dart, the Michigander. That, because my place is... And so it's not just the fact that the Lord uses me, 
but he uses the mitten too. So because I come from that place, he's a God of location. So, so y'all don't believe that yet? But this is why the Bible talks about you wrestle um, against um, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Because he's a God of domain of place and space and time. And when we begin to think about placement and how God uses places and locations, we see all through the Bible that whenever God called a person, he probably called them either from a place or to a place. Y'all don't know it yet? He said to Abraham, get up and leave your father's house and go to a place. Uh, see, 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 so even right there in the beginning um, that he was using a place to get a job done, um, he created Adam and Eve. He created them in a place called the garden and, and, and he gave them dominion in the garden. And so even in that, when he chose two people, he gave those two people a place and that place had a purpose. And I need the house to understand tonight that every place that we've been has had a purpose, that every place that you've been through has had a purpose, that every place that God has walked you through has had a purpose that we cannot understand this occasion until we understand what God really did in the other places and those other places did not always work good for me but they were good for me some of these places gave me a headache But he made that place conducive for me. Listen to this, that when we understand that the Lord um, uses places and people, we understand that the places that God used always has a purpose. Um, when we see that God begins to use places, whenever he's used places, he used places and he sent his spirit in order for that place to, con to be conducive to his will. Um, when we get to places, we understand that the places that God desires to use uh, begins to reveal his heart toward us. That every time I ended up in a place, it showed me God's heart concerning me. That if I ended up in a place to where I didn't know what was next, God would show up and reveal himself in a different way. And the truth is, had I not been in hell sometimes, I wouldn't understand how God can give me grace. The truth is, had I not had my heart broken sometimes, I would not understand how God can heal a broken heart. That we have to understand that God will use the places that he allows us to walk through so he can get his will done and I need about two or five folk to prophesy real quick if you think you're in a tight place say hey place you're about to work for my good I thought I thought I was angry but now I just feel a shaking down in my spirit that God is about to turn this thing around that this place is about to benefit me say yes in here is there anybody in the room tonight that will celebrate the fact that I'm in this place. In this place. Listen, you, we, 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 um, Angela, real quick, something to drink, real quick. Um, we, when we understand, when we understand about how God uses places, take the drink, please. God is good. When we understand, we don't stop the juice. Uh, when we understand um, how God would use places, um, I need a few folk that would just think back to some of the places that you went to. The last bed that didn't belong to you didn't become your deathbed. The, okay, y'all, listen, listen. We, 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 he, he allows us to transition through places. Um, that, that if you read through the Bible, even when he told um, Israel they were going into bondage, he used the place of bondage as a place to bless them. 
Um, so he even told them, I mean, he got real detail. He says, uh-uh, plant, uh-huh, plant gardens, have kids, multiply. He says, because you're not going to leave this place for a minute. He says, but then I'm going to return to you, and I'm going to take you to the place that I promised you. And we have to understand that there are places and times in our life where God has been right there in the midst of a placement in order to get his will done. Now, Citadel, I know you were like, why he's talking about places? Because you cannot celebrate this place if you don't celebrate the process y'all want to come up here and shout on this good stage that looks good but you can't celebrate the process the process when it was only about two or three four of you you can't celebrate the process when y'all everybody said they not gonna make it they gonna close down you gotta celebrate the whole process because if you celebrate the whole process then when I every time I say this place I should have to, I couldn't have to keep y'all to be quiet because when you think back to where he has brought you from you will understand the significance of this This place, I didn't lose my mind in this life. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. They tried to give me medicine, I didn't take it. I didn't. Listen, because this place kept me. I, listen, it, listen, li when you, when you, when you, I'm going I'm to I'm leave the real preacher to my brother for Sunday. No, no. So, uh, oh, and my other brother, Dwayne, I'm going to leave to him. Um, I'm going to just set it up, the game board, so they can take it home. This place, if I, if I can be so transparent some moment, there was a season in my life where I went to jail at least three times a year. And, and that, was, that was a good year. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm from Detroit. I'm from the hood. I fight. I don't mind. Listen, I, you, I, I will fight you in your house, and I will wait on you to call the police and sit there and be like, yep, I did it, to go ahead and take me. I'll be out in four days anyway. I, there was a season in my life, and, and it got to the point we had a get Pastor Dar out of jail fund. Y'all laughing. They knew. They knew. They knew. Like, this is the secret money. So if y'all get that phone call, I got them, all I do is call one person, and they'll call everybody else. Pastor in jail again. I remember, Pastor, yeah, let me tell you, Pastor in jail again. But that was such a long time ago in my life, you know. But, um, but in 2020, 2020, I went to jail. Wasn't my fault. I was innocent this time. Like, this time I was innocent, y'all. Listen. I celebrate the fact, amen. And um, when they came to put the handcuffs on me, I said, Mr. Officer, give me one second. I said, here's the keys to my car. Here's my wallet. Here's my debit card. This is my PIN number. You go ahead, and when I get a call, I, it's in my account. Y'all just go pull it out. I'll see y'all in a couple of hours. Uh -huh, I already had a plan because I was innocent. I ain't got, ain't got to worry. Um, got me a lawyer and everything. I said, we're not going to do this. They was charging me with a felony. And so um, I was like, mm-hmm, y'all, um, one day turned into two. Two turned into three. And then they said, hey, the bus is coming to take y'all down to county. And I said, I said, now, Lord. For once, I ain't do nothing. And you going to send me down to county? I said, I'm going to trust you because now I'm about to be the man with a record. I done made it 36 years without a record. So now you're going to put me here to get, Lord, I trust you, right? Y'all, we was in the, what they called the bullpen. All these folks just in this one room, right? It was COVID and everything, right? They done, they done shoved this thing up my nose to test me for COVID and everything, right? We was in the bullpen. All I had on was flip-flop socks and the hoodie that they took me to jail in. And I was using my hoodie as a cover and a pillow. So I had to decide if I wanted to be cold, if I wanted my head to hurt. So I rotated every other hour. One hour, I will be warm. The next hour, I put it under my head. And so then um, while I was in jail, the Lord gave me the opportunity to start prophesying to the men in the bullpen with me. And so let me tell you what happened. Um, the truth is, I, at first, I was more concerned about trying to get out that I didn't ask the Lord, why am I here? 
And so when I, watch this, when I surrendered to the fact that I was probably staying in jail, the Lord began to speak to me and I began to minister to the other men. Y'all, I'm not making this up. I was sitting in jail and the men were sitting around me like, say more, sir, say more. And I was going around and I said, hear the Lord saying concerning you. And then one dude was like, you know what? I got to tell you the truth. I said, what's up? He was like, I was going to fight you when you came in here. I said, excuse me, what? He said, yeah, I was going to make a statement. And I told him the next person that comes in is the one I'm going to jump on. He said, but when they walked you in, there was something with you that I couldn't put my finger on it. And he says, but now I understand, sir. And he says, don't worry, it's going to work out for you. He said, now the rest of us, we're going to be stuck here. So when we laid down to go to sleep, y'all, they was giving me sandwiches and juices. You need something, Reverend? Do you need this? I said, no, I don't want to eat that nasty stuff. But I had all this food sitting around me. And so when I surrendered to the fact that I'm probably going down the county. And I laid there. Then I heard, Nichols. And I was like, that's me. So I got up, and I, and I, now I feel like I'm one of them. I was like, what? <laughs> he said, get your things. And I was like, oh, I guess I'll see y'all down in the county. And they looked at me. I said, y'all, I remember what I said. The Lord has a plan for all of you. Straightened myself up. And I got out there. And I said, why are they not going with me to county? And he said, sir, you're not going to county. I said, where am I going? He said, you're going home. I said, I'm sorry. He said, they posted your bail. You going home. And so I said, really? He said, sir, get your stuff. So I was like, I'll see y'all. Y'all got my number. Y'all know what to do. It's 313, blah, 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 blah. All the saints can't have my number. Call me later. And as I, as I was walking out, um, there was my lawyer. And he says, Pastor, you ready, sir? I said, what, man, what took so long? He's like, man, we had to get through, but don't worry. You're going to be fine. So as we were walking out, he says, hey, before you get out here, I need you to fix your face. I said, why, what's wrong? He says, I have never seen anything like this. I said, like what? He says, sir, there are people here for you. And I said, what? He said, not one person. There are people sitting outside the jail cell waiting on you. He's like, so I need you to fix your face and walk out like you got the Lord with you for real. So, y'all, I put my hoodie on, and I was like, okay, wait a minute. Like, all right, all right. So, so the, the door opens up. They give me the rest of my belongings. I walk outside, and as I get outside to the parking lot, all of these people are standing there. And then Apostle Shipman comes up to me first. He stops me before everybody. He says, listen, sir, if you need to cry, I'm going to hug you real quick. You cry, but I'm going to block your face. He says, because the people need to see that their leader is okay. And he says, so I'm going to give you a minute. And he stood right there, and he blocked me for a second. He says, so if you got to cry, go ahead and cry. Y'all, I put my head down into his chest, and I started crying a little bit. He said, now, man, fix your face, because the saints want their leader. And so he moved out the way, and then there come Taz. He's like, oh, man, you okay? I said, I'm good. And everybody was like, Pastor Dart, are you okay? I said, I'm good. And then my lawyer was like, man, this is like the movie Lean on Me. And so I didn't understand why I had to go through it. But in that place, God used me to get a message. Um, and not just like God, how he will allow our process to put us in places so other folk can get a message. Stop thinking that your process won't be tough because in order for God to be God, he got to use the folk and put you in places so you can get the job done. But the great thing about any place that I go to, God is always. Always. Oh, in jail, he's with me. Sick bed, he's with me. Now listen, I, is this helping anybody? Listen, I said it, I'm going to get, get real preachy in a minute. Um, but I hear the Lord saying, he told me, he said, he, he said, boy. And I said, yes, Lord. He said, make them remember the journey. Um, because um, when you start to think about your journey, you can really say, this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our, in our eyes. When you understand that what God has really done for you is because he is not slack concerning his promises. Um, you have to understand understand that everything that God has promised Citadel is now literally unfolding right in front of your eyes. Let, thank you, Holy Spirit. Not unfolding, but you're living in the very promise that God has given Citadel. And when you understand what God is doing with Citadel, because God is always a God of places and people, that when he starts doing something for the place, that means he's about to do something for the 
so, so now that you got the building, now comes the other assignment. Y'all, y'all gonna shout this weekend. Y'all gonna have a good time. But after a while, you gotta get prepared for the next level of the assignment. That there's about to be a shift in the house because the place has shifted. And now that the place has enlarged itself, now the assignment is about to be greater. So you cannot do in the last season, in this season. You cannot be as slow in this season. That the assignment is about to be different. The mandate is different because he told you that everywhere that your foot shall trot shall be yours. Now here is the truth. The only way my foot is going to trod, I got to move for when God gives me an assignment. And now that you're in the place, you have to start walking in the assignment. And God is saying that he does not want lazy folk, but he wants some folk that believe that this place is even smaller than the next place he's about to take us. I'm, I'm, I'm not... As the place begins to shift, so do the people. So some of you that think you're so grand and lofty in your title, goodbye. Because there's about to be a shift. You cannot be double-minded and trying to be in this new place. You, 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 you cannot be in this new place and want to be served but not serve. That this place is going to be a place that's going to take the task of being a servant. And if all you want to do is sit in the big chair and have a big goblin to drink out of, I've come to tell you that God is going to remove your candle. But where are the people that will serve in this season? Uh, listen, okay. Listen. 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 This place. Sit down. This place. Oh, the Lord. The Lord. The, the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. The Lord is shifting the people like he's shifting a game board. I hear the Lord saying that he's about to reveal the intent in the hearts of people. That you were able to make it over and be fake in the last season. Uh, but, 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 but I hear the Lord saying that he's removing the cover in this season. Because you won't be able to fake it till you make it in this next go round. So either you got it for real or you don't. And, 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 and so, um, y'all, y'all, they sing this song every time we go to Maryland and Atlanta, and I'm going to say it's so long, bye-bye, because some of y'all are about to move out the way, because you have been a hindrance to what God has been trying to be and do in the place, and I just come to let you know we love you, but goodbye, because you can't fake it in this next season. So when you begin to, am I doing okay? When you begin to, uh, you begin to, uh, Lord, I just had a flashback back to to the Bahamas. We were sitting at dinner, and my nephew from Atlanta, he was loud. (laughs) And Lady Marshall said, oh, you look so nice to this person. He goes, lady, why you lie like that? And I was at the table like, and I looked at him, and I and I couldn't get my foot across under the table fast enough. I'm like, he's like, what can they? They can hear you. And then he was like, oh no, no, not you. I was talking about something else. And we get outside. He was like, oh darn. But why she lie? I was like, I agree, but. Sh- the restaurant was about this big, y'all, and it was like 12 of us. But, but, but I, the Lord brought that back to my remembrance really funny because he said we were in a place to where that we were bigger than the space that we were in. Um, and I hear the Lord saying that even though the building has gotten bigger, some of you are in a place.
place you're bigger um, than the, you're bigger than the place that you're in. Because some of you have allowed yourself to stay in a small place because you're too afraid to really step out and do what God has called you to do. Can I help somebody? A lot of times when y'all want to step out, y'all only want to step out when you think you're called to go start a church. Everybody ain't called to pastor a church. We need some folk that's willing to step out to say, I'll lead in the house. All y'all want to be prophets. Shut up. Oh, I, I feel an unction on the Lord. I got I to gotta go and do the work. Do the work inside the house. And because guess what? If you do it inside here, he'll see and say, you got to go. You got to go. There's more for you. But there are some of you who keep yourself confined to this small place. And God is saying, it's time to grow the hell up so you can move into your next place. I know exactly what I said. Because some of y'all keep holding on to the old stuff in the old place. And you won't get nowhere because you won't let it go real quick. Just tap yourself and say, self. Grow up. Right? <laughs> Listen. So when we, we look at the Lord, how he deals with places. Sir, what's your name? Yes. Can you stand up? What's your name? Stefan, how you feeling? Um, you, they were singing how excellent. And you, you sir, you were singing. You, you felt like you, you, you was back there like this, 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 this Saturday night at the Apollo. He said, how excellent. Stefan, I hear the Lord saying that it was for you. That you have to understand that you have held yourself back and he has been trying to pull you out. And I, it's so weird because um, I hear these mixed up sounds. I don't know. Ben, you don't have to lay hands on me. I'm good. Not yet. Not yet. I'm good. You good. You ready to work. You ready to work. Um, I hear these strange sounds and, and some of the sounds, it sounds like music. The other sounds sounds like keys and chains and the other sounds are like whispers of people. And I'm trying to decipher through the sounds about what they mean. And I'm asking the Lord, so what does this mean? He he says the chains and the keys means that he has been bound to a place that he's locked himself to, that it has not been the enemy, it's been him. And he has the keys to set himself free, but he don't believe that he can be free. So that's the sound of the chains and the keys. I said, well, what's the sound of the people? He said the sounds of the people are the people that he talks to and try to hold counsel with, but the truth is they don't want him to be successful. And so what they do is when he goes to them, they'll start telling him the opposite of what he's been sensing God. And then he'll be like, you maybe you right, you right, you right you right you right and then I hear this sound of music and I said Lord why the sound of music he says because if I can't get his attention um, by the way that I've been trying to then I'm going to use the avenue of music to get his attention and he says that even in secular music he gonna get your attention that if he said if they play to the window to the wall you're like Lord is that you telling me I need to get up and do something to the window and the wall the Lord is saying that he is going to communicate to you the way that you understand because you have not heard him in the last season but I hear God saying that he's about to open up a door of favor in this I hear you Holy Spirit in this next season and even the winds of the Lord is about to touch you now so I prophesy to the winds of the east the west and the north and what I see we speak now in the name of Jesus that you're about to touch his heart his mind and his body now elder Ben now you're ready and now as you touch his heart his mind and his body we speak that you're reconciling him to purpose all over again and now fire Fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, come down. And right now, in the name, lose him. Lose him. Lose him. Lose him. Lose him. Lose him. Yeah, right there. Somebody say this place. Oh, y'all didn't mean that one. Somebody say this place. All right. Listen. All right. So as we, as we. As we, as we, um, as we, um, as we look through the Bible, the Lord used places, right? And then, um, and, and as the Lord told me to remind you, um, he said, remind them of the process, remind them of the journey. Um, the truth is the Lord gave me some very specific places that he told me to remind you about. Um, and can I go through some places real quick? Um, the truth is, uh, um, the Lord used a place called the pit. And remember, in every place, God has a purpose. And the Lord said, um, in the place of the pit was the place that he preserved life. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, remind Citadel that they've been the pit for some people. See, we, don't, we always like to equate that the pit is a bad place. But if you go and actually read what the Bible says, that when they decided to throw Joseph in the pit, it says, and when they threw him in, there was no water there. Um, which means that they expected for it to be water. And so they threw him in 
And when he got in there, the place that was meant to kill him now became a place to preserve him. Um, Citadel, some of you ought to celebrate the fact that God used a place called Citadel the Pit that when folk threw you away and wanted you to die, you landed right here and it preserved your life. Um, when you understand the fact that this place has preserved your life, that even when everybody turned against you, it was the pit that kept you. When everybody tried to go ahead and come up with rumors to destroy you, it was Citadel the Pit that kept you. Is there anybody in the room tonight that it will celebrate the fact just like Joseph I thank God for this pit I thank God for this pit I thank God I, oh, I hear I hear I, the, the, listen, I, the, the next place the, the next place and I'm and I'm moving quickly because I didn't talk and ran my mouth um the next place after God used the pit um he also used a place called um my horb um and y'all know it um the place of the burning bush this is a, this is really good so now we have the place of the pit um that preserves life and now we have the place of the burning bush in the desert that reveals purpose that it was in a desert that he revealed purpose it was in a dry place that he revealed purpose. It, it was in the rough place that he revealed purpose. Some of y'all want to come and look at your purpose in the pretty place, but you won't find it in the pretty place. You got to go down to that rough place. Well, somebody says, how you know that? How you know that? I'm going to tell you how. Because if you read the Bible, it says that Moses was keeping um, his father-in-law Jethro's sheep, and then he took him out, and the Bible says he went up um, on the backside of the mountain. Um, and so he went up the backside through the desert, up the backside of the mountain. So that means the backside has, more, even though it's not as crooked as the other places, it still got a lot of turns. So he had to go to a rough path, and he got through the rough path, and he got to the place, um, there was a burning bush, and it was in that burning bush that the Lord began to reveal his purpose. Y'all know the story. God said, take your shoes off for this ground is holy. And he says, shoes. He says, listen, I need you to go back to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. He says, I can't go. I can't go. I, I, I know. Don't you know what I did? Um, I, 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 I got a stutter. And he says, shut up. He says, take your brother Aaron with you. He says, but I need you to go back. Um, I need you to understand that some of you would have never found out your purpose if you didn't go into the rough place. Y'all want this kumbaya church. Y'all know what kumbaya church is. Don't, pastor, don't chastise me. I'm grown. But, but I want to be anointed. But you can't, you, can't, you can't check me about nothing. Um, oh, no. Um, we got into an argument. I'm leaving. Can I tell y'all, kumbaya church ain't real. Um, real church has conflict. Real church has to have a rough place because it buffets me. And when it buffets me, it makes me a little bit better because sometimes the problem really is me. It ain't always you. And when you begin to buffet me, I say, oh, let me check myself. Oh, OK, OK. Um, and so I need you all to understand that some of y'all wouldn't know what your purpose was if it wasn't a place called Citadel in a rough place that got right down in your face and told you to shut up. Because if you really read what God said to Moses, he got frustrated. He says, shut up. And he says, listen, I hear all of your complaints. Go get Get your brother Aaron let him go with you and he says and now you are going to be a God unto Aaron he's gonna be your prophet now put your shoes on go get your family go back down to Egypt and get my people then when you keep reading the Bible you never read anywhere it says and Aaron said every time we look it says and Moses said and Moses said, and Moses said, well, somebody said, why is that important? Because now the man who just said he had a stutter had no problem with communicating. I need you to know you keep looking at your defect. And the truth is, it's in that rough place that you're going to find your purpose. And with your purpose, you're going to come confidence. I don't care if you say I'm butt ugly. God gave me a purpose. I don't care if I'm 400 pounds overweight. God gave me, well, maybe I don't want to be 400 pounds. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, I don't want to be for that. But, 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 but you have to understand that, that, that it's in that place. Um, Pastor, can I, can I minister to your brother real quick? Can you stand up, sir? I, you know, it's always such honesty. You are so faithful to serving your sister. And it, it, it really does my, I love your sister. I, I love everybody. Um, so um, every time I see you with your sister, it really does something to me. And, um, and when you walked in tonight, I said, there he go. Here he go, his sister here, and there he go, he here too, and there he, there he go. 
And I said, and most times his sister started shouting, y'all, y'all have read this to him. He'll get up too. He'll be like, yeah. and, say, and then so I saw you come in. I said, Lord, um, why? Why, why? Why does he always come in so confident? He says, listen, remind him about the places that he's been through. Um, the truth is, uh, and, I, and I'm going to say it like I hear it, um, there was a season in your life where you felt like somebody pulled the rug from under you. Um, and he said that even when they pulled the rug from under you, as you were stumbling, you kept serving. And I heard the Lord saying that it's in this place, this season, um, that he is going to reveal to you everything that you lost was not a bad thing, but it was so that he can show everybody what real restoration looks like. And I hear God saying because of your heart to serve, that he is going to grant you the desires of your heart. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his right, everything other stuff he'll add unto you. I hear the Lord saying you're in the add unto you part. That, like. So y'all don't know how to celebrate for other folk. You are, you are in the, he's going to add unto you. Listen, um, because a lot of y'all start seeking God for other stuff. But it says if you seek if him first and his kingdom and, and his right, he'll add these other things. What's the other things? All the stuff I couldn't even get a chance. Lord, I want a better car. It's yours because you, you've been faithful to the house. I hear the Lord saying because you've been faithful, I hear him saying he's adding to you in this season. Increase. Now, I'm not, I'm not even talking about just money because I don't deal with money. Um, I let that be everybody else. Um, increase. Increase in revelation. There it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There it is. Um, increase in revelation. Listen, teacher. Um, it's 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 OK. It's it's OK. Everybody, everybody can preach everybody. And it's and that's OK. Um, but there's some anointed teachers. You. Um, they're going to stand up and it's going to dissect the word of the Lord, you. And when you begin to go through a pre pre um, precept upon precept, you're going to see the glory of God be revealed in the house. And I hear the Lord saying that he's going to increase um, your revelation um, according to his word, that he is going to give you insight that you never thought that you would get. Listen to me, teacher. And he says, because as you begin to teach, you're going to be an apostolic teacher, that you will understand mysteries of the word of God. And then as you begin to understand the mystery of the word of God and you begin to give it to people, he said, it's going to cause the house to grow. Because as your sister begins to preach it, you're going to teach it, and it's going to be an increase in the house. And I hear the Lord saying that there's a breaking that's about to come into the house because he's breaking the nets. Because you have been. Do you receive that word? Does any of that make sense? Amen. So then the Lord used places in the Bible. And so as he used places in the Bible, we know that he used the place of the burning bush. The next place that the Lord used um, in the Bible was the place of the Red Sea. Um, the place of the Red Sea was very important um, because now we saw Joseph in a pit. After we saw Joseph in the pit, we saw Moses at the burning bush. And now Moses has now gotten his purpose and he's gotten the children of Israel out of Egypt. And now um, the Bible says uh, that they get to the place of the Red Sea. Now remember, I told you um, that God will use places to show his heart toward us. Uh, and so they get to the Red Sea and the Bible says as they get there, Pharaoh and his army were behind them and they begin to cry out to Moses. Uh, the Bible says Moses then turns to God and say, God, uh, here we are and here they come. And God said, why are you crying to me? He said, use what's in your hand. And then Moses goes back and he looks at the Red Sea. He looks at the people. He looks at the Red Sea. He looks at the people. And can I tell you all the truth? If he was a leader like me, he was like, well, we're going to see what's going to happen. Either he's going to do it or, <laughs> or that's it. Bible says Moses lifts up his staff, his rod in his hand. Because um, remember, there are two things that the Lord sent with Moses, three things, actually. He, he said, I put my words in you. I sent Aaron and then take up your staff. So it's three things that he gave him. Right. All right. Good. And so um, after that, um, Moses looks at the Red Sea. He holds up his staff and as he holds up his staff. The Bible said the Red Sea began to part. Here's this important place. And the important part about this, it wasn't just about the Red Sea parting. It was about God's heart toward us because it's at the place of the Red Sea that you see that God is a way maker. Citadel, that you would not understand what it means to be here if you had never had come to face to face with the Red Sea because there was some times in your process that God had to remind you that he was a way maker. Just when you were getting to the end of your rope, he stepped in and made a way. He said, why are you crying out to me? Use what you already got in your hand. And when you realized and you looked your enemy right in the eye and said, well, either he going to do it or he not. And you just lift your hands. Everything began to part. Citadel, I've come tonight to tell you that it's all about the experience.
experience. So now we've had the pit. We've had the burning bush. We've had the Red Sea. And now we get to the place called the place called the, Re the well of Rehoboth. You have to understand that now we see that Jacob has now journeyed and journeyed and journeyed and journeyed. And the Bible says that he got to the place to undig with for his well that his father dug. And he got to the first well and it was called Isaac. And when he got to that one, they came and fought him over that one. And that one meant conflict. So he ran off to the next well. And when he ran to the next well, that one was called Sitna. And that one was called, I think it was quarreling um, or, 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 or hatred and hatred. And so when he got to that well, they fought him over that one. He got all his stuff and he went to the next well. And when he got to the next well, he dug. And he, after he dug, he started waiting for conflict. So he began to count the time. Wait a minute. They came real fast one other time. So they're not here yet. So now let me go ahead and name this place. And he says, this is the place of Rehoboth. Because God has made room for us. Citadel, you have to understand that it's at the will of Rehoboth that God shows you, reminds you that he has made room for you. That in a place, in a city, in a, an organization, in a community where people didn't want you, God said, no, no, no. I, I made y'all think that y'all were defeating them. I made them go through Signa. I made them go to Esau because you didn't understand. They had to get all through that just to get to the place of Rehoboth. That's why I don't understand, Citadel. That when you realize that God has made room for you, how can you be quiet in this place? Because had this been my house, I'd be like, Lord, I remember when they tried to kill us. I remember when they tried to take every. I remember when they did. But you have made room in this place. Where's Tucker? I want y'all to invite me back next year, so I'm not going to touch it. So, so the Lord. Brooks, I celebrate the fact that through it all, you learn how to stay in position. I don't think you get enough thanks sometimes. I know, I know Bishop tells you thank you. I know Apostle tells you thank you. And sometimes you just feel like you, 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 you're not right. You feel like you, you, you don't got it all together. That's all right, because I don't got it all together either. Um, but you learn how to stay in position. Um, there's something about standing in position that has a grace and favor all on its own. Don't you know, even when I don't understand it, if I stay in position, he still gives me a blessing just because I stay in position. Um, we cannot. I cannot preach a gospel that I won't live. And I don't mean just about living holiness. But I mean about taking command of everything that's happening to me. I got sick one time, and, and right before service, well, Pastor, don't preach. I said, what, excuse you? I said, let me go to this bathroom. I said, <clears throat> look, look in that drawer, see if I got some fresh underwear in there. I, I had messed myself. I did, right before service. I was sick. Listen. Amen. Hey, listen, y'all, I was in the office like, listen, I got in there, and it was like, Pastor, it's okay, it's okay. And I said, no, because I tell y'all to push through. I, I can wipe and clean. I'll be out there in a second. Y'all just pray. Here I come. And so, y'all, I sat there cleaning myself. I put my fresh underwear on, got my clean clothes on, and I straightened my back up. And I said, now, listen to me, stomach. You going to get us through this service because God is a keeper, and I don't care what you say. You going to act like you got some sense. And I command my body to line up and operate the way God created it to operate. That door opened up, and I said, Y'all, I preached and gave, I think, everything I got. I prophesied, laid hands on people, and I called for my team. I said, y'all take over. And they said, okay. And I said, 
And so they came, are you okay? I said, the Lord did what I asked him to do. I asked him to keep me through the service. I was done. He stopped speaking to me. He said, now go to the bathroom. I said, I'm going to the bathroom, Lord. I cannot preach if I won't live it. People of God, we got to take command and say, no, 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 no. I'm on assignment. You, okay, all right. Listen, y'all, 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 okay, okay. Was that nice? Good. So, so. The pit, the burning bush, the Red Sea, the well of Rehoboth, and now the wall of Jericho. So we see the pit preserves, the burning bush revealed, um, the Red Sea showed he was a way maker, and Rehoboth was a place that God makes room, and now the walls of Jericho is a place that lets you know that praise is always your weapon. You have to understand, Citadel, that after you've gone through these different places, and now we see that the children of Israel, Moses is dead, Joshua is now the new leader, and they get to the walls of Jericho that was a fortified city, um, because Jericho was now the first city to get into the promised land of Canaan, and so the Lord gets them to this place. The wall was so big, it was like so huge, and the Lord Lord says, shut up. This is what y'all are going to do. Y'all going to be quiet and y'all going to y'all just going to walk around this wall. Y'all not going to say nothing. Um, he says, but then when I tell you to open up your mouth, uh, that's when you're going to open up your mouth. But the Bible says that that they sent out Judah first. Uh, and so the praisers, the singers, the dancers, uh, I'll say it again, the praisers, the singers, the dancers, uh, um, they got in front of everybody and they because they were they knew their assignment uh, and they got in front of everybody. And as they begin to march around the wall again, because now the truth is is they begin to realize, Lord, um, I remember when our great, 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 great grandfather was stuck in a pit. Lord, I remember when you brought him out of the pit. Oh, Lord, I remember how you made room. Lord, I remember how you preserved his life. Lord, I remember how you kept Moses. Lord, I remember how you revealed to Moses. Lord, I remember how you got them over the Red Sea. Now, Lord, here we are. We wandered in the wilderness 40 years, and now here we are, and we're at the wall and now you're telling us we got to keep quiet God said don't worry because your season and your moment is coming and when I tell you to open up your mouth in this place y'all musicians y'all gonna help me when I tell you to open up your mouth in this place it's gonna reveal something to you Citadel I need you to know that there's about to be a release of a new praise in the house because praise will always be your weapon that when you need to go to the next place you need to get the praisers to stand out in the front and be willing to praise God. Is there anybody in the house tonight that says, I remember how he brought us through. I remember how we had a praise. Is there anybody in the room tonight that will say, God, I remember that place. Jericho is now a place that reminds you that praise will always be your weapon. There are times when I don't have the right words, but I got the right clap. Uh, there are times when I want to say things and, and, and I just I can't, I can't fathom the words, but I got to thank you. Um, that's okay. Um, there, there, there are times when I, I want to be deep and wonderful, but all I got is some tears and an uplifted hand. Um, there, I, you, know, I, I, you know, I'm Kojic, and I, and I can't shout for real. I be fake Kojic shouting. I, what I do is I do one, two, three, one, two, three. I, so I can't shout for real, all right? But, but there are times when I want to get up and be deep and wonderful, and the Lord say, just move your feet. I'm like, Lord, but you know I ain't got no shout. You about to embarrass me. And I be simply like, because that's all I got. But the truth is, even in my two feet stumping and dancing, the Lord still responds. Because praise, can I tell you, we was having a service the other week. Sister Tori, raise your, raise your hand. Sister Tori, y'all, she, she grew up Baptist. So she, she Pentecostal now. Um, so... So, so the Pentecostal God got her a couple of weeks ago in service, 
and she started trying to shout and because she really didn't have one she went for what she knew and I looked down and she was standing right there in the middle of the aisle like and I said, now, wait a minute. And so when I saw her, I said, no, I, I just saw that. I made that up. But then she did it again. She said. And so I was like, okay, 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 okay. I said, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to say nothing. But then she did it again. But this time when she did it, everybody else saw her. And so when they saw her, go. The whole church said, oh, because we understood that God was now revealing himself in a different way. It may not look like your shout, but praise is always my. I'm, I'm moving for y'all. Well, oh, this place, this, 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 this place. I, I wish I had. This, this place. Listen. So Citadel, from when you move from McDonald's 
down to Riverdale. When you went from Riverdale to the town hall, when you left the town hall and went to Hydesville, when you left Hydesville and went to Bowie, when you left Bowie and went to Glendale, and when you left Glendale and went to District Heights, and then you went all the way back to Bowie, but now Citadel, here we are at 110 West Hampton in Capitol Heights, and I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, just like he said to Solomon, I have heard your prayer prayer and thy supplication and thou has made before me and I have hallowed this house which thou has built to put my name there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be in this place perpetually sit down is there anybody in the room that will celebrate the fact he brought us from the downs all the way down to Bowie, back up to Bowie. He took us from Bowie to Hydesville. Now look at us in this place. Look at us in this place. Say yes in here. Say yes in here. Say yeah. 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 Yes. I need somebody to stand up on their feet. Open up their mouth and take the Jericho prayer and give God a fifth place praise. I say give God a fifth place praise. Yeah. sitting next to you how old is she Seth, can I minister to her good Angela something to drink Ooh. what's your name honey Sabrina Soraya Ooh, it's this close what, what? So, Soraya, as you were sitting there, um, I felt like this, I don't want to use the word bubbling, but I felt like this almost antsy anxiety jumping from you. And so, first I tried to say it was the enemy. The Lord said, no, 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 no. He said, that's me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing something with her. I'm doing something with her. And I said, well, Lord, what are you doing? I said, Hear the Lord saying to you, I'm going to come down. <laughs> Christian, let's go. Hey, brother, so good to see you. Know I love you. Yeah, right on. Hear the Lord saying that he's doing a work in you. That there is a place of healing that he's touching inside of you, okay? And I'm not going to call certain things out loud. Um, but I hear the Lord saying that he wants to go and dig that place up. Um, he said, that because what you've been doing with it, you've been looking at it and using it as an excuse to where you don't think you're good enough. But I crush every thought 
that is of the devil. I take command of it now. I, I, I know I can hear. I, so right now we heal in that broken place. Yeah. We heal in that loose her. In the name, loose her. In the name of Jesus. Loose her. In the, yeah, let it go. It's you and him. You can let it go. Loose her. from that old place you're not you're not he says but I will do a new thing in you and the truth is there's such a gift a prophetic gift that rests inside of you because you're an intercessor and I hear the Lord saying now he's calling for the intercessor to wake up it is your time it is time to get on watch I, I know what I hear the Lord said it's time I, oh, I hear you I hear you Holy Spirit and he says he's revealing you he's uncovering your eyes he's uncovering the veil so you can see people for what they are and he says and the truth is when you see it he says it's not for you to get angry or talk about it it's for you to intercede and he says and when you begin to intercede he says and when you pray for others he says I'll move in your house and I hear God saying that I fortified your body because there's a generational thing that's been trying to touch your body and God said not so I hear the Lord and I decree and I declare the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus Now you know that praise you've been sitting on all night. Just do me a favor. If you if you can't dance, just scream real quick. 
and just give it to him because he's about to do it in your house. I like, I hear, like, I hear, Lord, forgive me because I try not to touch stuff like this. I hear him saying brand new everything. And I don't even know what that's up. I just keep hearing brand new everything. And whatever you get, give me some of the old stuff. So right now, he said, that's that, 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 because praise is always going to be your weapon. So do, yeah, there it is. There it is. When I hear the Lord for you, it's so weird. Um, I see writing above your head, and I just see all of this, all of this writing. And I said, Lord, what's that? He said, Tell her to write it so I can do it. He said, The only reason why it won't happen is because you won't write it. And he said, I told them, write the vision. And I hear the Lord saying that as you begin to write it, that it's about to come to pass. So can you hold your hands up for me? Can you hold your hands up? Um, right now, can, 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 it's okay if I lay my hand on your hand? Right now. There's about to be an overflow right now. Can you, can you place your hand on her stomach for me? Because I don't, and I'm cold, you don't touch women. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 fire of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Holy Ghost, yep. What's your name? Precious, precious. That's so precious, precious. Um, hear the Lord saying that. See, I, I like to hear exactly what I hear because then I because I don't prophesy often, so when I do, I want to make sure I'm clear. I hear the Lord saying He beautifies the meat. That, that, that's what I hear. He beautifies the meat, and I said, okay. And I hear the Lord saying that he's beautifying those places in your life that people try to destroy you in those places. And I hear him saying because he's going to prove to people they never had the power to stop you. They never had the power to hinder you. And he said, and as I reveal you over to some people, he said, they're going to be like, oh, my God. We thought she, how could she? How was it? And God said it's him because he beautifies the man. And then I hear the Lord saying for you, I hear it. I hear the Lord saying, one, two, three, stop. One, two, three, stop. He said the next 10 months of your life is going to be just like, just like that. He said you're going to open up one door, two doors, three doors. He said we go to the third door, it's going to be a time of process and change. And I, and I, and it's, 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 I know what I hear. Um, just like we have apostles in the church, we have apostles of the marketplace. And I hear the Lord saying that he's going to use you to organize and help people furnish thoughts and ideas that you're going to go to people and you're going to help them figure stuff out and they're going to pay you for it. And then you're going to go to the next place and figure stuff out. You're going to help them write it out and they're going to pay you for it. And he said, and then I'm going to send people back to you 
who tried to stab you in your back and tried to misuse you, and I'm going to make them come, and I hate to say it this way, but sit at your feet, and he says, and I will use you to minister to them because I can trust you, oh precious. He says, because I have seen what you've gone through, and I've kept you through every phase, and he says, I brought you to this place for this reason, and he says, this is your season of elevation. I know what I hear, and can you just lay a hand right there on her stomach for me? And right now, I hear the Lord saying, this is about to be an overflow now, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you because your power flows through her. We thank you because your authority flows through her. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Come on, shout for it. Yes. Does, that, does that word make sense? Like, I guess so. Okay. okay. Amen. I, I, I'm, I know. Y'all tired of me. Y'all tired of me. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Woo. Woo. I hear the Lord saying fresh fire. Yeah, I, and, and I heard it when I was standing up there. And as you were sitting there, and he said, yeah, I'm giving her fresh fire. Um, because I don't want to use the word hardship. But there is a test you're about to go through. And he says, I wouldn't give you a test if I didn't think you can handle it. And he said, so today in this place, he says, I'm charging you for the test that you're about to go through. So, Father God, we release now your authority from on high. And we say now, fill her again. Right We say, fill her again right now in the name of Jesus. I know. said there's more for you. Can you stand up for me? Oh, hey, little baby, I'm just sweating on the baby, Lord. The, I'm not sweating on the baby, I'm sorry. The Lord said there's more, the Lord said there's more for you. Uh, bring that down, because she, she, she didn't hear this. Um, there's more for you. Uh, nope. That, when you put your hands in your pocket, that means you close it off, because you're nervous. This, this ain't a place of rebuke. This, this is a place of thrusting, um, because this is the fortress. And the Lord said there's more for you. Um, Honestly, it's so weird because I, how do I say this? You're in the room tonight, but I don't see you in the place. In um, she not a member. That's why I don't see her in the place in the spirit. You, she came with who? Her husband. Which one? You, the, the keyboard. That's good. That makes sense to me. Amen. Because you're in the room, but you're not here in the spirit. Because that means you're not connected to the house. But I hear the Lord saying, because you're here tonight, that he wants to do something for you. Um, the truth is, the Lord has given you thoughts and ideas that you don't move on. But you need to move on them. Because when you move on them, I hear the Lord saying, it's going to bring wealth for your household. That you need to be able to move on those things that God gives you. Because COVID done changed the world. People have been making money. I got, I got my own clothing line. I do. It's called Promise by PD. I only sold 13 shirts, but they, it's my clothing line, right? So I hear the Lord saying that you need to move in those ideas. And so don't be afraid. Like, does that make sense? Don't be afraid. What's your name? Desiree, move. Move now. There, there's a blessing in it for your household. And trust me, you're going to be an even greater uh, aid, not only your aid, a greater support for your husband when you begin to move. And the truth is, I speak peace even to you while you sleep at night. You've had some turmoil days and nights that you have not told. I know, I can hear that you have not told anybody about. But God said he's going to move on your behalf. Listen, somebody clap your hands real quick. I know. I know. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I know. Listen, about to put me out.
Can somebody help mother down for me? Help her down there. Um, I hear the Lord saying that there's a praise in your feet tonight that's going to ignite the house. I, and I don't know why he said it was you, and it's not a bad thing. Um, oh, I thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, because he wants to renew you. He wants to renew you because what you have not told people is you sit back like, is this really the place I belong at sometimes? Lord, I can go somewhere else. But then every time you even get to that place, you're like, nope, I'm going to stay right here because you belong here. And, and the Lord said he wants to renew you for this place. Remember, I talked about there's a shifting in the house. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because I hear the Lord saying he's about to increase responsibility for you. That even if it doesn't happen right away in the house, he's going to increase your responsibility in the spirit. Um, that there is going to be a season of travail in the house because there's going to be a new birthing in the house. And then we need some mothers and midwives, and you are one of them, that can stand there in the birthing place and see all of the mess, the blood, the guts, the ugly stuff, and still travail and push and help them to come. And I hear the Lord saying that this praise is your renewal of strength. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their... All right. So, Mother, does that make sense? So, real quick, can you just in this place make a praise to the Lord right there? I don't know if you're a dancer or a shouter or whatever. Just do whatever you got to do. I like your little dress, too. That's right there. Listen. Listen. Uh-huh. Yep. Renew it. favor just clap your hands real quick right right there thank you thank you thank you thank you I need I need I need every believer in the room that can give me a gift of $25 real quick I don't want to prolong it I'm going to start this off with $300 so I don't want to prolong it if you can get $25 just stand to your feet and I'm not I'm not gonna beg the saints I'm not gonna beg the saints because when we leave here, we stop and get black and miles. We stop and get our weed. Like, we, we know some of y'all smoke. Y'all stop and get y'all chicken. Just give the Lord this $25. This is going to be all right. All right? All right? Some of y'all going to KFC or what's that? Hip hop chicken. I, what's a hip hop chicken? I drove past that place. I said, what? what I got to try. I said, it got that crunching on it. Oh, it's like, it's like Captain J's. Okay. All right. That makes sense. I said, I said, who won't hip-hop chicken? I said, it's going to get up and start dancing on the table and stuff. I, I don't know about that. But if, come on, if you got the $25, stand to your feet. I, quickly, I'm not going to beg for Stand, let's stand. I, if you're going to give it through Cash App, if you're going to, and to those who are watching on Facebook, um, welcome to our building dedication. I say ours because I'm family. And so, um, welcome to our building dedication. And if you are watching on Facebook, can you do me a favor? Can you sow this $25 with us tonight? And so you can give via Cash App. I'm sure the name is running across the screen. You can find them on Givelify. I'm sure the name is probably running across the screen. Um, and if you are in the room and you need to swipe, come see the swiper lady. All right. These only people that's giving. Woo. You, you got you giving. Now, you giving. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm going to help y'all out because there's a place called sacrifice. And I didn't even deal with that place because I'd have been up here all night. But Abraham had to give the thing that he wanted so badly back to the Lord. So you're saying, well, I don't have 25, but I got 10 or 15. I need you to stand to your feet in this, in this place of sacrifice to give in this offering. This offering is to further the work of Citadel. They go to other countries. 
they support other ministries. I know because my church has been a benefactor of it. We want to make sure that in this season that this house never lacks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me let me um let me send mine. Copine Nation. Oh. oh. Oh, okay. Y'all I'm gonna send some money to some other people. Listen, and and I looked down because I didn't see y'all emblem on it. That's why I was like, wait a minute. All right, so I, because I'm a man of my word, I'm I am sowing 300 um, from my ministry. And let me tell y'all. I'm not going to say that my house doesn't have a need. We listen, we've been in, we got 3 years to pay our building off. 3. We got 3 more years to pay our building off and I want it done. And I don't want to wait to the 3rd year and have to do a whole lump sum. I want it done. I when that 3rd year come, I just want to be like we done. Thank you. God bless the saints, right? But it's also other stuff that I want to do in our building. Like I want new carpet. Like I want to I keep telling the saints they going to look up when I'm going to rip the carpet up. We're going to be in there in bare floor, ugly bare floor. And I said because if I rip it up it may make y'all give. So if y'all get tired of looking at the ugly, they're like, Pastor, what do we need? We need $15,000. Right? So tonight I'm sowing because I believe that if I sow into this house, the Bible says every place that my foot shall trot, he'll give it to me. So I'm giving in this place. So that means he's going to give me the favor and the blessing of this place. So when I go back home, the residue is on my feet. And I can say, well, I gave out in Maryland, so I know that the Lord going to do something for me. I was telling my son, Tez, and Elder Ben, as we were driving out this way, I said, y'all, is it weird that I expect random things just to happen for me as a blessing? I said, and I try not to explain, say that to people out loud, but I, like every day my phone rings, and I expect it to be that one phone call that's going to change my life. Like every day, every, and, and, and when it don't happen, I'm like, well, it's always tomorrow. Okay. And like, I'm, and y'all think I'm playing and I feel in my spirit, man, every time it's not the right day, I'm getting closer to the. So I, I believe I, I, I expect people to do a random blessing. Like I just do because I do it for people. And so, and so, um, I'm going to be honest. Can I be transparent? I can't good. Um, so I'm not strapped financially. Like I, like I'm, I'm a, I budget well. My credit score is really good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a good black man, educated, college, college educated man, got a good career, right? And so let me tell y'all, I'm not strapped for money, but I'm in this season in my life that, you know, I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm paying, paying, giving, 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 and I watch my savings start to do it. And I said, now wait a minute, God, now this ain't like you. And, and so I said, I'm, and, I, and the devil tried to say, well, don't, get, don't tithe. No, I'm, I'm going to keep tithing. And I tithe beyond my tithe. Let me tell you all that. And as Elder Ben, don't I? I tithe, I tithe on my pay week and I tithe on my non-pay week. And I don't even get paid on my non-pay week. And I still tithe like it's a pay week for me. Right? Because I believe that the Lord is going to do something. I say that to say that I believe I, every day I wake up and I expect a random blessing. Well, one of my spiritual daughters, and I want to use the word spiritual daughters because they all call me dad. And I never want them, I won't, never want them to feel less than. So my daughter Sade, in the middle of the night last night, um, I was asleep, and they were en route here to us. And, um, and all of a sudden, my phone goes off in the middle of the night. And anybody who knows me knows I don't answer my phone at night. If you are not one of my brothers, I do not answer for people. So you don't call me because you ain't going to get through. And so when I looked down, and it said cash app from my daughter, it says, hey, pop, pop. This is just for you because you've been a blessing to all of us. And so here's what y'all didn't know. Um, I didn't have any money to eat yesterday. Aha. Uh -huh. But when I got the cash app, and after we left here last night working, I said, Tess, 
Chardonnay sent me a blessing in the middle of the night. And I said, we can eat. And so I text Elder Ben. I said, listen, I got $80. We go on a Taco Bell. What you want, nigga? I, ooh. What you want? And he's like, oh my goodness. I said, yep, I got enough for all three of us. And we ate Taco Bell and we ate it good, y'all. Last night, did not complain. And so after we got our little Taco Bell bag, I said to Taz, I said, isn't God good? Because he knew that we had, he knew I didn't have enough money to eat tonight. And it wasn't a thousand dollars, but it felt like a thousand dollars. So if you're in the room tonight, and you can give the 25, please stand. You say, I don't have the 25, but I, I want to give in this place of sacrifice. And I hear the Lord saying, he'll meet you in your place of sacrifice. I came in last night and I kept saying, is there anything y'all need me to do? And I'm not saying this to brag. And after Elder Renee said, move these boxes. This building ain't small, y'all. Move it. She, 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 well, she didn't tell me. Let me. <laughs> no, she did. She said, she said, Bishop Superintendent, can I borrow your son? And can he help move the boxes? Is that okay? And I said, he can help. And then I said, let me go see what he's doing. And when I saw it was a whole bunch of boxes, I said, my son not going to serve if I'm not going to serve. And so I said, we can move the boxes. Where is it going? So we walked to the far part of the building. To the other far part. And I said, Ooh, Jesus. But we moved all those boxes. And then before I left, I went to my brother's office. I said, Bishop, I'm about to go. He said, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. And I said, before I go, is there anything else you need done before I leave tonight? He was like, no, no, you're good. And I said, all right. And I shuffled to the door. I said, boy, get my jacket. Come on, let's get out of here. Why? Because... Even though I didn't have money last night to sew, I had an ability to sew. It can never be said that I only sew into my brother's ministry with my money. But I, I sew with my time. Anybody who knows me knows most of the time I started offering off with $500. But all this time I can budget was $300. And I told Tez that when we got here. And I said, but I got to find a way to make up for the other $200. Did I not, Tez? And so when they said they needed help last night, I said, there's my $200 right there. I don't come here to preach to look good. I come here to help build my brother's ministry. So, if you're in the room, let's all sow together. So if you're giving, just stand to your feet. I don't care if it's cash app. I don't care if it's $2. Stand to your feet if you're able to stand. I'm done. Father God, anybody need to see the swipe lady? She's saying a swipe lady. Okay. If you need to swipe, please come. I hope, I hope tonight you touch somebody. Um, I, set up, I hope I set up good for my two brothers to come Sunday. So, Father God, we pray and we ask that you take this seed and you bring increase into the dead. This fortress. That you continue to fortify this place. That you use it for the upkeep of the house, the ministry, and the community. So, Father God, we pray now that evangelism, missions, every ministry, youth, dance, music, will be blessed because of this giving. Father God, we pray now that our little green American money will go now to other countries and help um, other ministries and other places that we're about to give tonight. So, Father God, we pray even for my brother's churches in the Bahamas. 
that the seeds that we sow tonight, that some of them will go over to the Bahamas. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that even the seeds that are sown tonight will go from being monetary to being a principle that's going to overflow in somebody's life. So, Father God, I even pray that what's about to happen is going to hit um, Bishop Desmond e. Brooks' life. It's going to cause increase the flow. New vehicles, better jobs. It's going to cause it to flow. That's funny. I looked at you and I heard increase. Increase right there. So, Father God, we thank you. Oh, my goodness. I just realized who you were. You've been here this whole Why you ain't say hi to me? See you. I miss you. Amen. All right. We're playing games tomorrow. We're going to come back. We're going to. No. No. Did we, we didn't bring. Mother Nina didn't bring it. Sorry. Mother Nina not here. No. We Listen. Mother Nina not here. I don't remember that stuff. That's not my job. That's not my job. That's not my job. Sorry. I'm, I'm cheating already. <laughs> like, listen. Yeah. So. So we, we created a trophy, it's a real trophy, that says, Be Calm, City of Champions, and Citadel. And every time we get together and we play games for that weekend, whoever wins, the trophy goes home with them until we all get back together again. We did not lose. Citadel cheated. We lost, it's okay. That, we, I, totally, I totally forgot to bring the trophy. So, so that means, okay, here, here's the deal. So, whatever we, we play tomorrow, whoever wins, when we get together in August, June, oh, June, convocation, I will make sure the trophy gets to us in June. Oh, I'm not doing that. That's a lot of work. Somebody mail that trophy here. I don't even know how to use Amazon. Listen, I had to get something. I said, who? I said, Elder Ben, order on this Amazon. Get it to me. How soon can it get to me? I don't, I don't even know how to do that. Don't, don't, don't let me put nothing in the mail. I email everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, thank you, Father God. We thank you for those that gave. Father God, that this house will never lack. We, that we cause increase for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and settlements, sales and commissions, estate and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and return, checks in the mail, finding money, Bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, it's blessing time, it's offering time, it's sacrifice time. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come and give your sacrificial seed. Amen. What a fellowship. What a joy to be. Leaning on the everlasting arms, what a blessing is. Leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all along.